Okay, Troy, I, I saw the picture that you put on and the tools that you're using that you tried with to do body line dents. This is the one I definitely identified. I, I thought actually it was this one. Um, the two dent craft tools that I own. I thought I would use a lot. I, I really don't use them at all. Um, and I would never approach a body line dent with either one of these tools. I think this is the one you have pictured because of the color of the handle. Uh, it's too thin, number one, really. And what I want you to think about is your the distance from, so you're gonna be here, your hand coming down the door and you're pushing on this tip here and the um, transfer of energy from your hand to your tip, there's a lot for it to go in, in terms of losing energy, losing drive, really. Um, this is a tool that I would use to go into a, a factory uh, hole so like here, I'm going to come in this, these nice huge holes in the BMWs, and that just has a lot of kick. It's just got a long uh, foot on there, and sneaking on in, that's a huge hole, but I mean, you get the idea. That's where I thought I was going to use this hole. I'm not going to say that you can't use any kind of tool to, to do uh, any kind of dent. Um, I would definitely say I wouldn't use this to do a body line dent. And I probably wouldn't use any of the tools that you picture to do a body line dent. The other ones, I don't, I didn't have the exact examples of the other tools that you had. This was similar to another one, but this actually has a longer foot to it, which would be better than what you had. The other, the one that you had kind of would say end about here. So when you're trying to push on a body line dent, your tool is, you're, you're already back here. Um, and you're just working too hard. You're not letting you, the, the nice thing about having um, tools and the right kind of tools is that they're doing the work for you. That's where a lot of guys, or a couple guys anyway, talk about a, a flat bar. And um, I'm just gonna use this as a generic flat bar. This is a dent dial. I'm not saying go out and buy a dent dial. Um, and I'm not saying I use a dent dial to go down and do body line dents a lot. I do sometimes, I have other flat bars I, I do for that. Um, but, this is optimal in terms of your drive, in terms of, we're, you're talking about coming down the glass. So we're, I'm sticking to talking about doors and really the higher, the belt line, body line. Your, your drive that's gonna be from here off of the glass to here is a couple inches. And the strength of this, the power of this, the loss of energy is non-existent in terms of loss of energy. The drive is great. Um, if you're coming down here and you're coming straight as, a, as opposed to coming here and twisting ultimately optimally you want to be pushing on this now the drawback with the flat bars and why you can't say oh you need to get a flat bar to do body line dance well what if it's up front of on the front door and it's underneath the the, the mirror or what if it's in the rear door and it's back further back and you got the uh, window channel well, guess what? This isn't really going to, it's not going to solve all your problems, especially if you have a brace that runs pretty close to your body line, which a lot of cars do. Okay, so what I did today was I just uh, did a, you know, shot a couple body lines. I have a lot of body lines. They said two body line dents. This is one on a Lexus RX. Not a big one, but it is a body line dent right there by the door handle. I used, uh, I'm showing that um, dent craft tool with the long kick and, you know, where I could get to the dent, but you're just, it's just too long. You're losing too much um, power with using that kind of a, a tool. And a flat bar would be nice. That's a dent gear flat bar. Bar. That's a terrible flat bar. You can hardly get anything on it. But that window channel was in the way. I couldn't get um, the a flat bar on that dent. I'm showing another a similar tool that the, the one that I showed in the basement there, um, where. You know, that would have worked. I could have got got to the dent, but what I would more like to do is use something shorter like this. For this kind of dent especially, it's not going to take too much to get out. And you can see where my sight line is, is much better. Um, and then that's actually the tool that I use. And see, my uh, where you can get your eye level right up to the dent, I think it really helps out a lot. Especially comfort too. You're not like uh, have your hand all the way up.
you know, this I'll show you. This is another tool similar to one of those tools you pictured, like the finesse tool you pictured. So automatically, my my eye level is a little bit higher. My hands up high. I'm not as comfortable working like this. I would much rather have a sh a smaller, shorter uh, tool to get on that dent. And I did with that that short one. It was actually a dent magic tool, kind of an old you know older tool, but it was it, it was adjustable. It's an adjustable handle tool, and you can see there's that little mark. It was it was a dent right on the body line, um, and that you know clean out pretty nice. No, nothing special. This is wholesale stuff. This actually is a, a Ford Edge. This is a pretty nasty body line dent. Um, and Troy, actually, I, I this was not something. This was an as-is car. This was the best byline dent example I had today. Uh, I did not get paid to do this. I just wanted to, you know, kind of follow up uh, talking about the tools with um, doing a repair. So I did this a little quicker than I normally would. Um, and again, I'm just showing tools. That tool, that dent craft tool, that um, you had tried on one of yours. Uh, a dent like this is just going to laugh at that tool there. And you can see where the handle kind of comes right at the um, at the door line there. And, um, you know, I, I saw one of the finesse tools you had there was adjustable handle, which is nice. But like I said, again, a flat bar, that'd be awesome to get a flat bar on this. Well, guess what? There's a brace right uh, at the same level as the uh, body line. And I cannot get a, a flat bar on this dent. It's just not happening. And so I'm looking, right now I'm just exploring. I'm, I got this little sharp tip finesse adjustable just to see where that is starting the brace and what if I can get under. I was able to get under the brace and push on this. But that's a real sharp tip tool. I didn't really want to start with that. And now, um, so I started with the other, that dent magic tool, and here I'm showing after a little, I just push a little bit, get a little bit moving, and, um, um, slap, you know, slap tapping, um, with, uh, with this as opposed to a traditional knockdown. Um, and if I, I, I did heat this up a little bit with a torch as I was going, normally I would set up a tripod with a, a heat gun as I'm, as I'm doing this. Um, I didn't do that. One thing I did do, you know, moving the, your light around, you definitely want to be doing that. Um, get, you know, don't just work your dent from, from one angle. Um, so these are actually the tools. Once I got a little bit of room from the brace out, I use these finesse, those crook tools. I forget what they're called. Um, if you, you know, they're, everyone knows about them, I think. I, I use Tessa tape on the hump part. That's what I'm pushing with here. I'm not pushing with a sharp tip part. You can see I have two lights set up, which definitely helps you out. Um on something this deep uh, but I'm using that you know the hump part with the Tessa tape and I'm just trying to I'm just staying on the body line I'm not going above it I'm not going below with my pushes at least I'm trying not to and I'm opening it up I'm just trying to combination doing some pushing doing some knocking down and when I'm not now I've graduated from the slapper tapper and I'm just using a um, jackhammer here and you can see where I'm showing, if I can't get my hand on the car itself, I'm resting, I'm, I'm supporting it with my other hand. You can see where I, I, my point with this is that I'm always anchored. I always have my hand anchored for the, the hand that I'm holding the hammer with so that I can get precise strikes. And um, so again, is this is a combination. I'm pushing, I'm knocking down, I'm pushing, I'm knocking down, and I'm Pushing and holding, if you can see on these repairs, the way I am, and, and now I've actually moved on to a, a metal uh, head, the traditional mushroom metal head, uh, as opposed to the, I had that dip plastic one before, but you don't want to pump your dents, that's why I was, you, you want to hold and then release, push, hold, and release, and again, just on the line, on the line, and opening up around where you're having crowns and, and, um, and it's holding the too much pressure, which there I can, you know, knock down a little bit more, but I'm trying to keep it clean. Again, I'm moving faster than I normally would with this repair. Um, and, uh, you know, they got one on the house, uh, cause I want to try to help you out. And there, you know, that's, I pretty much called it a day at that point there, trying to keep it nice and clean. And I hope, sorry, this is a little long maybe, but I, I hope this helped and follow up with any questions.